Hey church, this is Reverend Carissa with your Wednesday word for Wednesday, May 25th. Today, I wanna to continue sharing with you about the hidden figures of scripture, the women of valor who changed the world. But today I wanna to share something a little different than what I had planned because in the wake of uh, the shooting in Uvalde, Texas, we were just overcome with so much grief and so much pain. And so today, instead of talking about the women I had originally planned to talk about, I wanna tell you a little bit about Rachel. In the book of Genesis, Rachel is one of the women in the family tree that starts with Abraham. So you remember you have Abraham and Sarah, and then they have some kids. The main one is Isaac. Isaac has some kids. The main one in the narrative is Jacob. And then Jacob marries Rachel. Now there's a whole long story about how Ra Jacob also marries Rachel's sister Leah because Rachel and Leah's dad tricks Jacob into doing this. Um, but in any case, Jacob marries Rachel and Leah, and then they have 12 sons. And that's where you get Joseph of the Joseph and the Technicolor green coat um, and the 12 sons who would turn out to be the 12 tribes of Israel. If you've seen Joseph and the Technicolor dream coat, you might remember that Joseph and Benjamin were Jacob's favorite children. And that's because Joseph and Benjamin were the two of the 12 brothers whose mom was Rachel. So Rachel was Jacob's favorite wife his favorite wife and the favorite mother of his children. And in scripture, Rachel gets name checked a couple of times in surprising places. And that's what I wanna lift up to you today. Now you all know the Christmas story, right? You know the story, um, Jesus was born, Herod came after him. Um, but listen to this in the Gospel of Matthew. Um, you might recall that Herod comes after Jesus and asks that all the boys under the age of two would be killed, but that Jesus and his family escape to Egypt and so they, they are saved in that way. But then Matthew says this, Matthew 2, starting in verse 16. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or younger, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then it was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, a wailing and a loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled for they are no more. Now, the story of, of Herod and that aftermath of him being so angry about somebody trying to take power away from him in the wake of his anger and his, his seizing and his grasping onto power, Herod commits incredible destruction, killing off innocent children in a way that is just inexplicable, inexplicable even to this day for any leader to act in that way. It's this kind of inexplicable um, destruction and inexplicable grief that I think about when I think about a shooting at a school with 19 children and two educators who have died. And there's no explanation. There's no explanation for a uh, senseless act of violence like this. And so we like Rachel, um, Rachel weeping for her children. She refuses to be consoled because they are no more cannot be consoled. We cannot be consoled because these children, we're going to have a lot more funerals for children. As one of my colleagues, children said on the way to school this morning. Now the scripture from Jeremiah, um, this scripture originally comes in the book of Jeremiah, which is the prophet. Um, Jeremiah, the prophet is known as the weeping prophet because he was a prophet that saw the people of God go through such loss and agony and um, really heartbreaking times. And so he was the voice, the mouthpiece of God in the midst of a really tragic time in the nation of Israel. He was the prophet of God during this time when the nation of Israel was defeated by a but by Assyria and then exiled into Babylon. And so think about just an entire nation being conquered and then taken into exile. That's the situation and the absolute heartbreak into which Jeremiah is speaking. And so this quote that Matthew pulls to talk about the grief felt um, in the wake of Herod's destruction, that same grief is felt in Jeremiah as well. Jeremiah talks about the whole nation of Israel as the children of Rachel. Rachel is the mother of a nation because after all those 12 boys that she and Leah bore, they became the, the heads of the 12 tribes of Israel. And so Jeremiah um, 
speaks from God's mouth. Thus says the Lord, a voice is heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel is weeping for her children, for she refuses to be comforted for her children, for they are no more. But then Jeremiah keeps going, sharing the word of God. Thus says the Lord, he says, keep your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for there is a reward for your work says the Lord. They shall come back from the land of the enemy. There is hope for your future. Your children shall come back to their own country. Now, I don't want to offer empty hope or empty promises. Um, there is no good coming out of this senseless loss of life in Uvalde this week. But the word of God reminds us that death is not the end and that even in the midst of such grief and senseless hurt, that God is yet still at work. So I wanna urge you to think about and look for where God is still at work. Maybe this is a time where you get involved in working to prevent gun violence in our community. Maybe this is a time where you get involved in mentoring young men and young women so that they don't feel so desperate that they turn to gun violence. Maybe this is the time where God invites us into the hard work that can bring hope and can bring healing and can can help to, even despite the pain, make some sense out of this senseless time. I wanna to close today's Wednesday word um, with a prayer from Psalm number 30. Psalm 30 says, God, you have turned my mourning into dancing. You've taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy so that my heart may praise you and not be silent. O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. So we pray God that you would take our mourning Sit with us in this morning, sit with us in this time of grief and sorrow and agony and not knowing what to do. Sit with us in this time and then in your time, we pray God that you would show us the way forward. Show us how to step out of this morning and into action. Give us joy in your new life and give us confidence and clarity in our next faithful steps so that we might empower your kingdom's reign here on earth where there is no more sorrow and no more tears. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, the giver of life, and all God's people said, amen.